Welcome back to this part 5 of creating chatbot from scratch using Kera sequence to sequence model. In the previous part we have already built the model. Now we are going to build inference model in this part to talk to our chatbot. So once again we are going to build a different encoder and decoder model from our previous encoder decoder model to create our inference setup in such a way if we pass in text and it gives us out the predicted next word. So we are going to use previous model to create this inference model. So let's jump into the video. In the top we have encoder model. Let's just first focus on this encoder. This is going to be really simple. Just we are going to pass in the text and it will going to give us its internal states H and C. It is really easy to build. So let's just build this model. And this is the model which we have already built in the previous part. If you haven't watched, go ahead and watch this part. So let's start this video by making some simple imports. One is model and another is input import. Now let's build the encoder model and it is really simple we will name this as encoder model and we will use model class and as an input it will have text and it outputs its internal states and we are going to use encoder input from the previous model which we have already built and encoder states from the previous model which we have already built. Now as you can see on the screen we have encoder model which is already been created and has been trained on the network and we have encoder states similarly in our model. And now let's build decoder model and it's a bit uh, complex to make but I will try to make the things simple. So over here on the screen you have model and as you can see we used 400 cells of LSTM so this is going to return a 400 vector of H and 400 vector of C. So we have to build an input placeholder for H and for C both of them. So we will just name them decoder state input H and decoder state input C and we will specify input shape equals to 400 common none and we will do same for decoder H and decoder C. And now make list of this both H and C by giving it name decoder state inputs and create list of H and C. And now as I say, said that encoder state will be input to our decoder model. So it should resemble the structure of this encoder state. So it has the similarity between encoder state and decoder state inputs. Why we didn't use encoder state just to um, avoid graph disconnects. So we have used different placeholder. But they both have same structure. We will use them later when we will be uh, predicting some things. And now finally let's build our decoder model. So as you know in previous part we have built decoder LSTM and you can also see on the screen we have decoder LSTM from the previous uh, trained network. So what we are doing connecting this decoder LSTM with decoder embedding layer this is also previously built and we are setting initial states to be decoder states input. Both of them decoder states input and encoder states have similarity between them and we are going to use during the prediction not now. Now this is going to return us decoder output dec state H and state C. State H, state H and state C are the internal states of decoder LSTM. Now we are going to create list of state H and state C and we will finally build the model. And this is our model and it has input of decoder input. We have already this layer trained previously which is decoder input of shape 13 comma none and it has input of decoder state input. I have already told that this is encoder state equivalent and we have our decoder output which is the prediction from the decoder LSTM and the decoder states which is state H and state C list. Okay. So now before moving further make sure everything in your mind if you not try asking them down in comment section or try rewatching the video and now it's the simplest part because we are going to say just encoder model dot predict decoder model dot predict and just uh, appending and removal and just just if else statements. Now make sure everything makes sense now let's jump into the next part. So we are saying pre pro one it's a variable for the user input and if the user presses Q in the keyboard or as the input to pre pro one it is going to take us out of this loop. And now we are applying clean text function to our pre pro one which we have already built in the pre processing part. So now let's start uh, explaining by taking an example so that it makes more sense. Let's think that uh, user inputs capital H E L L O hello input to the um, chatbot and then clean text function will going to transform it to small h E L L O and apply all the transformations which we defined in the clean text function. And now we are um, set converting this to list. So now pre pro will be uh, something like list of H E L L O. And now hold your breath because something awesome is coming. Um, this time we are using another list of txt and we are iterating in the pre pro and uh, because pre pro is a list so we can iterate in it. Now we are creating another list lst and we are splitting that um, uh, hello word and if there would be some spaces we are going to split them in the spaces. So x would be looking like h e l l o and similarly y will be h e l l o and then we are trying to append the vocabulary of y. Vocabulary is a dictionary of all the words which we have trained on our model or chatbot. So let's say if vocabulary of hello as a key has the 
value of 454 so if we're going to append 454 to the lsd and that lsd is appended to txt so now finally txt should be looking like list of list of 454 all right so much in it um try using longer sentence and think of it and try try and run on this and make sure this is fully understandable to you now we are applying pair sequence to our txt so now this time it will be converted to numpy array of length 13 and it should be looking like 454 0 up to the 13 length and now we will be using encoder model dot predict to predict the txt and we already know that it will going to output us its internal state so we can say encoder model dot predict as you can see on the diagram it has input of text and output of h and now we are creating empty target sequence of zeros so it should be looking like a um, numpy array of one column one row and everything values of zero and now as i said we will be sending sos token to decoder model so we'll convert sos token to integer value and set it to empty target sequence zero zero index and now we have two more variables stop condition and decoder translation as we are going to use true loop so we are going to set stop condition equals to true once we hit the max length or eos token and decoder translation is the variable which is used to um, hold the predicted output of our chat now finally we are going to use decoder model dot predict and we will transfer this sos token which we have already converted to integer and encoder states which we have already got from encoder model dot predict and now at last we will send this decoder output to the dense layer and dense layer which we have already defined in our model and let me show you it to you once again the dense layer and it will going to output um, um, probabilities up to the size of vocabulary size which we have already defined in our previous parts and decoded so it, we are using softmax function so it is going to assign the probabilities to each and every word in the vocabulary so so think of it it something looks like this 0 0.1 0 0.2 means the probability assigned to every word in the vocabulary and now we will use np.argmax function to take out the maximum probability index so in this case it should be 0 1 2 so in this case it should be sampled word index should be 2 now we will use inverse vocabulary to take back our word so sampled word should something look like this now let's take an example once so let's assume on the inverse vocabulary of index 2 there should be a value high so it is going to assign sampled word equals to high and one space just to um, decoration and now at last we will um, check if sampled word is not equals to end of sentence we are going to assign it to decoded translation or if that sampled word is equals to end of sentence or the maximum length of decoded translation is greater than 13 we will going to get out of this true loop and now this is the most important part resetting the variables now we have to reset empty target sequence to the new predicted word and that state as the at to the new internal states of decoder as you can see in this um, video once again let's understand by example so we have first empty target sequence was sos and it predicted as high now we will set empty target sequence as high and it will going to predict some new word let's say eos so so the the while loop will going to end and we have the output of high now at last once we get out of this true loop we only have to show to the user what the decoder translation is and that is the final inference setup now let's just go into the kaggle and try running this code i'll train for uh, let's say 10 epochs and i'll fast forward this just to save your time and it is trained for 10 epochs and let's just try our inference setup to make some predictions there we go let's just try asking hi how are you and simple question answering let's see how does it makes the prediction for now it's only trained for 10 epochs so the output should not be super interesting super cool but if you train it for more epochs it should generate better outputs and i guess that i should end this video at this point of time and if you think i'm able to give you something new today so make sure you thank me by subscribing my channel and giving this video a thumb up and if you have any queries make sure you ask, ask them in the comment section i'll going to shortly reply to your comment and um, in the further videos we are going to add attention mechanism and bi-directional lsvm to this model to our chatbot and i'll see you in the next